Thanks so much for joining us. We are alive at five and we're ready to get your thoughts on the stories we have today. First, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. We post every single day and we want you in on the conversation. So let's get started. I'm here with Cheryl Preheim and Aisha Howard. We have a lot to talk about today. Aisha, yours really is something. Yeah, so this one kind of took me back a little bit. So a father out of Florida, he made an advertisement. It looks just like a back to school ad. The father happens to be a photographer and a graphic designer. He created an ad with students wearing bulletproof vests and body armor. It looks just like the ads that we see when it's time to get those back to school sales. The kids look excited, but it is really making people do a double take with what they are wearing on the outside. Now we know bulletproof backpacks after recent mass shootings over the years have become a thing. But to see this in an ad, he said his goal as a father himself was to get people to really have raw reaction and raw emotion and just really think about the fact that this is even a reality that you gotta have. Well, this. mission accomplished because you see that and it hits mm -hmm. you right in the gut. It makes me wanna throw up when I yeah. look at it. To think that it's become so normalized that that's not something people immediately balk at, that that was something he felt like he had to do. It makes me sick. I think it's what he's saying is it has to be that level to get people to really pay attention and have a deeper conversation because how many does it take? How, how many lives lost inside schools? How many students does it take to have the conversations that aren't just gonna go in around and around and around, but where there's actual change? I think that's where it feels like everyone is stuck. Right. We're yeah. in the conversations that are just circular and not I think counterproductive in a lot yeah. of times. So what does it take to get to a next step? And he's this is what he's saying it takes, I guess. But Some it's real hard for action. me to see. It it's, is. It was hard for a lot of people to see. So the alarming part here with this story is the dad actually, the, the photo shoot, it was a year ago. And he said it was oh, so sad that oh. after El Paso and Dayton that the photos were just as relevant today as they were as these kids are dealing with hearing of more mass shootings right before they headed back to school with Dayton and El Paso, Texas happening just, you know, days apart from one another. And so he's like, let's have some real honest conversations that make you feel like you want to throw up a little yeah. bit and that make you say, is this what we have to think about? The fact that bulletproof backpacks are on the market. There are three major companies that are making bulletproof backpacks and the sales have surged. I was gonna say, a lot of we parents news and numbers. We did a news and numbers on Uplate a couple of weeks ago. Sales have surged for those companies by 200, 300% after these recent mass shootings. And so I think it's just a very sobering fact that that's where we are and like you said, time to get to some real solutions and answers, but that dad did what he felt like he could do to mm. contribute to that conversation, which is why we're talking about it. Yeah, he's definitely started a conversation for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. All right. All right, so I want to have something a little more lighter. Yes, Atlanta, <laughs> yes. Let's talk a little baseball. You know, the games, the Atlanta Braves games are going to change a little bit. Not anything that's happening on the diamond, but what's happening around it. The Braves have now announced they're going to extend the netting. They made this decision as there have been a number of people in the national, uh, the Major League Baseball that have been hit in the face with a ball, very scary, very dangerous. So they're going to go ahead and extend the netting all the way to the foul poles. And if it all goes as planned. It'll be done by September. The idea is trying to make families feel safer when they go to the game because those foul balls can come a line drive. They can go 70, 80 miles an hour. There's not a lot of time to duck. They're saying we're going to extend the netting so there's not even a risk of particularly a child or anybody getting hit in the face. I think that's a great idea. When I go see baseball games, I love going and sitting and watching them, but I'm always like kind of on guard. Yeah. Like I want to make sure that everything is okay. So I think that's a wonderful idea. But then you do have a group of people who feel like that is a part of the fan experience where um, I want to go and have the chance to catch a foul ball and have the players run over and give me a good little autograph. And so I don't think people who are looking for that part of the fan experience are too excited to know that that's going to be over for them. That's exactly the point that Aaron was just making. He said, I can't help but not like this. You buy tickets knowing the risk of the foul lines. If you don't want to risk getting hit, don't buy those tickets. Losing a great aspect of the game, in my opinion, outfield tickets are about to be way more in demand now. I guess if you want to take a glove with you and catch a ball, outfield will be your best option. Not only Aaron feeling this way. We got another another comment 
really along the same lines. Corey saying, will tickets be cheaper next year since you're taking away the live game experience? Kids yelling at players, coaches for a souvenir ball during the game will now have to go away. Others ways to be safe is called paying attention, not your best decision. I will say in terms of the paying attention, as fast as those come at you, oh, you could yeah. just be glancing at your phone and I can't get my three-year-old to pay attention. So if I, I would either have to make the decision to sit other places, which I definitely could in the ballpark, or the netting would be a good idea. Now the netting is such that it really doesn't obstruct your view, right. but it does make a, a barrier between you and the player. Earlier this year we had a, a, ball, a foul ball to hit a kid and the mm -hmm. player literally balled. Ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the fact that something that I did, you know, impacted this kid. The kid was okay, but I get both sides of it. It's been around for decades and decades. You know, why you go to a baseball game is the chance to catch the foul ball. So maybe everyone can just find a happy medium and, you know, change your seats or yeah. maybe they'll go to other ballparks that haven't enacted the regulations. I'm but. actually surprised it's taken this long. And I think the Braves are on the leading edge of the teams doing this. And, and mm -hmm. I feel like all the teams at one point are going to do this. I yeah. agree with you there. I think Make, we're going to see more of it coming down the pike. Yeah. Make it a safer. Yeah, it'll still be a fun time, though. Just a little bit different. All right. I'm about to light this place on fire. Turn this, it up. This is a debate. <laughs> what temperature do you keep your house? This was more of a debate than I ever thought possible. So new regulations just came out. I want to show you what they are real quick. We'll pop it up on the screen so you can see where you're supposed to keep your home. 78 degrees when you're home. 85 degrees when you're away, and this is the one that blew my mind. 82 degrees when you're sleeping. Not a chance. In no. a sweat sack. Yeah. I cannot imagine sleeping at 82 degrees. Where do y'all keep your home? That mattress is sweaty if you are on 82 degrees. Yes. Let me tell you that. I'm 74. 74, exactly. Seven, me too. Yeah, oh, some potty I'm 74. I'm 74, and we don't shift it. We, we'd love to get a system where it just does like the nest or something, but we haven't, so we just keep it at 74. Yeah, I will say if I'm like cleaning up or I'm a little bit more active, I may drop it down. I think 72 is the lowest that I've gone, but there are some times if I'm relaxing, 74 might actually be a little bit too cool, so I'll take it up to 76. Never in the history of an August in Georgia have I made it to 78, <laughs> 82, or 85. Let alone 85. Degrees. No, that's Give me not happening. I have to say, someone just fired in. 82 degrees at night said no woman ever approaching <laughs> menopause. <laughs> ever, ever. That is a private summer in the desert. Uh, so no. There are 300 people so far who have waited on this on my Facebook page. People are fired up about this. Most people saying exactly what you're saying. Absolutely no way. I'll start with Janet. She says between 71 and 74 at our house, depending on my hormone level at that moment. Mm -hmm. So that is awesome. I wouldn't even leave it at 78 for my dogs. Way too hot. Pets are a good point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My favorite comment of the day, though, goes to Debbie, who says ours stays at 67 Ooh. in case we ever want to bring home a penguin. Now, listen, I'm always cold. I couldn't go that far. Yeah, Debbie, that's a little bit too low for me. But now keep in mind, these were some federal uh, suggestions from Energy Star mm -hmm. saying if you wanted to keep the bill low. That's so true. If you're on the frugal side and not the comfort side, maybe that could work for you. But I Georgia frugal, Power but, yeah. is getting all I got at this point exactly. because I'm going for comfort. Listen, I am so frugal, but there are enough box <laughs> fans on the planet to help me with 82 at night. Although our, our producer Andre keeps it at 82 because he's doing a little experiment to find out for one month how much air conditioning really affects his bill. Mm. So he just said my ear. Your linen sheets. Linen, linen sheets. Linen sheets. Okay. It's it's a suggestion. But then on the back end, you have to think about in the winter, my husband would keep our house at 62 degrees. Oh, God. He really would. He used to be on a submarine, and he thinks it is comfortable to be cool. And That's I'm like cold. shaking. He yeah. got me a heated mattress pad. Funny. <laughs> I got some marriage advice. You guys oh, know. Got some marriage advice. It said things that you should talk about. The temperature you like to keep the house. That should be something that you discuss with your spouse. Right after spending habits. <laughs> spending <laughs> habits and how many t-shirts your husband should own. Yeah, <laughs> That too would yes. come in handy. Right. We are saving marriages yes. and homes one story right. at a time. All right, check your thermostat and let us know what you think about all of our stories. We always appreciate you being part of the conversation. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post here every weekday. Follow us on social media. Get your comments as part of the show too. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.